The Morgan Report with David Morgan. David Morgan of themorganreport.com for a weekly perspective for the week ending for February 2022. Well, stocks certainly had a rough time here of recent. About four days of massive selling. Some of the big names were off 15, 20, even 25%. Uh, The Q, the NAS, the QQQs, the ETF was done about a 50% retracement. Seeing overhead resistance now, a lower high is what I'm calling for here. I think we're going to see more um, downside pressure on the stock market than upside pressure. And I think that will be additive depending if the Fed really does what it claims it's going to do, which means raising interest rates in March. The metals haven't fared that well either. Uh, There's some uh, back and forth. We've got a little bit of a reprieve only to get sold off again. Uh, They're both, I would say, struggling. It's not unusual to see this kind of activity, especially with the market uncertainty that we're all witnessing at the present time. I would like to draw everyone's attention to uh, CPM Group, uh, Jeff Christian. He did a video today, uh, Friday the 4th, and I'm sure you can find it on YouTube with any search engine. I'm sure you can find it. And what he did uh, on this particular video, which I would recommend everybody that's in the market or going to be in the market to watch, basically asked the question, how much gold and silver should you own in 2022? They did a presentation similar to this at Silver uh, Symposium or Silver Summit a few years back. He took data from 1968, which he's still using, but he updated it here through the last few years. The ones that he did before uh, didn't include the last few years. It's very important. Uh, One of the things that he pointed out here, which most people are really not aware of, is how precious metals did in 2020. And in that year, silver was the best performer. I think gold was number two. Remember, I just watched this once. And then, of course, what it did in 2021. What's interesting about the move in 2020 was it brings me back to the WEF, the World Economic Forum. And Scott Meaner talked about his go-to investment when he was being asked by the Bloomberg finance guys at the WEF, what was your number one pick? And he basically said silver. Well, Scott hit it out of the park because that was the number one best performing asset the way they do it, uh, Jeff explains it, uh, for 2020. So certainly uh, he caught that one correctly, whether he sold their position or not. I don't know. I would suspect. I would say, yes, he probably has, but he got a nice gain depending on when he got in and when he got out. One thing that Jeff said, and I don't like to quibble, but he said that the uh, high price said that you know, the adage that uh, Buffett bought, oh, he talks about Buffett as well, so let me get on that topic. Talked about Buffett as well, and when he bought all the silver, and it was the market found out about it, and he bought everything under $5, and then uh, the market shot up, and it only shot up to 680 I think that was his number. And I remember being there, and I don't remember that number. So I went and looked at the charts, and most of the ones I found said, confirmed what he said. And that might have been the average, whatever. But I remember it getting to about seven eighty, dollars almost $8. It took me a while, but I did find a chart that verified that. That might have been intraday. I don't want to quibble too much. But his point was that someone buying under 5 and then it was going to really shoot up the market, and it really didn't. It brought it basically, I think he said, up you know, to 680. Let's just leave it at that, which is true, but it did go above that. I think what's interesting, though, is that it, silver did what it normally does. It spiked up. And then, of course, what happens in the silver market, which is the derivatives market, is that anyone that wanted to get on that rally up certainly got as all the paper silver they wanted. And then, of course, the price subsided. It came back down in the same range it had been. For, for so long when Buffett was buying in this area here where my cursor is. Anyway, if you take the high of 780 from 480, that's three bucks, which means an over a 60% gain. So uh, a lot of people would think if the billionaire came in and took all the silver off the exchange, it would take the market. I would say it depends when. And if you read what he really did, he didn't get all the delivery uh, at one time. Uh, After that was accomplished, the uh, CME put in a 
rule about position limits and what you could take. You could only take 1,500 contracts um, off the exchange. Now, that's been broken many times. Craig Hemke has brought that to everyone's attention several times. So I'm just saying that the rule exists, is whether it's obeyed a lot or not, I would say probably isn't. I think anyone that came in and repeated a buffer performance and tried to take 129.7 million ounces off the exchange now would say, nope, 1,500 is the limit or something along that line. And I just want to end with this. This is written in middle of the year 2019 and of dollars and data <clears throat> by Nick. I won't butcher his last name. I won't pronounce it. Talked about manias, tulip bulb, South Sea Island bubble, the great crash of 1929, Japan, and the dot-com bubble, the U.S. housing market, and of course, Bitcoin. And I'm not going to read this whole thing to you, but it's interesting to do a study. There's a book called uh, Popular Delusions and the Madness of Crowd Crowds by McKay, <clears throat> which is a very good read for any investor. Find out how mass psychology can move a market. And of course, there's been some talk about mass psychology in our little series that we're going to continue to expand somewhat on the silver psyop. Coming back to the article here, what makes a great bubble? Market cap, price, and recovery time. Some small bubbles, relatively speaking, the tulip mania, which most people are at least somewhat familiar with, compared to Bitcoin and then uh, some other indexes here looking at, of course, the housing bubble, uh, how they recover or don't what the NASDAQ looked like to the bubble and then what it's done since then. So you had that great big bubble in 2000 that many of us older people are real familiar with and saw that thing just basically crash. But from that bottom, you can see what it's done. Uh, greatest bubbles of all time talks about the Japanese stock market. I certainly remember that. I was reading newsletters at the time. I think it was Taipan was the name of the newsletter, if I recall correctly. And Reading that the Emperor's Palace was valued more, worth more than all of California. Um, so that's, that's a non sequitur. That doesn't make any sense at all. It's got to be a top, and of course it was. And there's a summary here that you can look at and compare these. Remember, this was written a few years back, so it doesn't take into the present. Uh, Bitcoin move up to about whatever, 67,000 I'll use as a round number. That's pretty close, I believe. And I think we're around 35,000 as I'm making this video. So I'm going to leave it there. It's going to be David Morgan signing off for the morganreport.com. Please recall to get on our free email list at the website's landing page, themorganreport.com, and check out our blog. In fact, I'm going to show you a couple things on the blog you might be interested in before I close. A couple of real quick ones. I did an interview with uh, Reggie Middleton on, uh, on cryptos, Brutasium, blockchain. And I really, anyone that's in the DeFi world at all, I highly recommend it. I've gotten, uh, I received some compliments from various sources saying it was a really good interview. I'm not trying to take credit for that. Just some of the questions seem to resonate with people that they really got a good View and the credit goes to Reggie because he's so articulate and explained it so well in such simple terms that um, that's what the, this message is about. So I highly recommend that. Of course, as I've shown before, you come to our YouTube channel by clicking there. Right. And uh, one I've talked about before, the community channel. And if you do that, <clears throat> this is a one I picked up recently on private money and Wildcat banking, certainly worth 20 minutes of your time as far as I'm concerned. Again, this is in the community section of my YouTube channel. Um, this is kind of funny. This is a long one. It may not, but this again goes back to mass formation psychosis. Uh, another take on who is Satoshi. I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, I think, again, worth your watch watching, but it's... Um, it's only 12 minutes. I think it's worth your time. And uh, Rafi did a great job here on uh, Silver Trust Report Bigger Pile Since the Silver Squeeze. This is a very good overview of the market. He did an excellent job. So I will sign off now. David Morgan from themorganreport.com. I'll be back with you next week with more insights from my perspective. Till then, I wish you adieu.